Good morning. Welcome to worship at Bethany Lutheran Church. I'm Eric Bessonen. I'll be your assisting minister today. Our preacher is Pastor Lily Brondike. Worship music musicians are John and Kim Beck. Our live stream tech is Kyra Beck. Usher is Rodney Spence. And Alter Guild is uh, covered by Marcy Cabin today. The radio broadcast is to the glory of God and in celebration of Elaine Clissell's 78th birthday by Dave Clissell. And Alter Flowers are to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for all of the fathers in our congregation here at Bethany. Happy Father's Day. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to Bethany Lutheran Church. My name is Lily Brondike, and I am the pastor here. A special welcome to everybody worshiping over our Facebook live stream or worshiping over our radio broadcast. It is a good thing to be the body of Christ wherever we may be on this dreary Sunday morning here in Escanaba. What a great reminder this rain gives us for our baptism. Just a note about today's worship service. Everything you need can be found in your bulletin and on your insert page. Yours is a nice shade of goldenrod, nice in summary. If I were you, I would take your hymn numbers from the front of your goldenrod colored inserts. The hymn numbers that you see on the boards are on the side are a good throwback to last week. So you could follow them and sing loud and proud and that would be beautiful, but I would follow the hymn numbers on your insert. You're gonna find that you're singing the same song as your neighbor then. We begin worship on a Sunday morning, coming from all sorts of places this last week. Maybe you were traveling, maybe you worked more than you wanted to, maybe you found some boredom. But whatever you had going on in this last week, the Holy Spirit has gathered us together this morning as the body of Christ to worship here and now. As you prepare for worship, I invite you to take a deep breath in and let it out. And when you are ready, I invite you to rise in body and in spirit as we begin with words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
we will pray together the prayer that is found on your insert titled Today's Readings. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is from Ezekiel 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will, make, will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under, its, under it, every kind of bird will live, and the shade of its branches will nest, winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, I the Lord, have spoken, I will accomplish it. The end of the uh, word of the Lord. This morning we sing responsibly from Psalm 92. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to our consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be, might be able to answer those who boast in our outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on. 
because we are convinced that one who has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of, of the gospel. and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe at once, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, and as they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. At this time, I would like any children who are worshiping with us this morning to know that you are welcome to come on forward for a special little message. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Just need to grab something. Oh, it's so good to see you. So good to see you all. Welcome. Come on up. We are a friendly crew. Yeah, let's all take a seat. Oh, my goodness. Everyone is looking so nice today. I did not get the memo that we were wearing pink. You look very nice. How's everyone doing today? Good. Oh, that is just gorgeous. Oh, I love lollipops. Oh. Do you guys love knock-knock jokes? You, do you know any knock-knock jokes? Yeah, what, what kind of knock-knock jokes do you know? Who's there? Hawaii. Hawaii who? <laughs> oh, that was good. You love lollipops and knock-knock jokes? Oh, awesome. Do you guys know how knock-knock jokes go? Whoa. All right, let's try a knock-knock joke. So I say knock-knock, you say, and then I say interrupting cow, and then you say moo. Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Should we try another one? Do you guys kind of get the knock-knock joke now? Okay, why don't you listen to my friend Lindsay here? So I'm going to say knock-knock. 
Och. Bless you. Do you think we should tell some of our friends out there a knock-knock joke? All right, Lindsay, I'm going to have you help me. I've, I've got some. Do you have another one that you want to share? Otherwise, I have some right here. Okay, how about we do this one right there? All right, here. All right, I'm guessing you all have now picked up on the premise of a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Boo. You don't have to cry, it's just a joke. <laughs> oh, it's your turn? Okay. All right, we got another one. Can you knock, knock? Knock, knock. Barry. Barry. Barry, nice to meet you. Barry, nice to meet you. Do you want to try? Okay, we've got some more. Real comedy. Knock knock. No 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 Did you want to try? All right, we got one. Say knock knock. Knock knock. Can you say spell? Spell. Sure, W-H-O. <laughs> all right, all right. That was the last one. <laughs> They're all gone now. Knock knock jokes are pretty funny, right? They're kind of funny because they never go like we expect them to, right? You expect that to answer the door? It is Daddy's Day. Mm-hmm, you're right. Oh, yep, that already happened for sure. Knock-knock jokes are kind of funny because they kind of surprise us. We answer the door, and it's not who we expect, and then there's something funny behind the door, and so we laugh. Isn't that kind of fun? Yeah. What's kind of cool is that our friend Jesus works in the same way. We learn all these stories about Jesus in church, right? Yeah. We hear stories about how Jesus lived and how Jesus loved when he lived. But the funny thing about Jesus is Jesus never shows up the way we expect Jesus to. In Jesus' day, they thought Jesus would come as the strongest warrior that ever lived. Can you, like, show me your big muscles? They thought this is what Jesus would look like. And instead, Jesus looked like this, with his arms open for everybody, to wrap them in a hug, to comfort them when they were sad, and eventually to even go to the cross to die for our sins. Jesus surprised all of us in the most unexpected way, just like knock-knock jokes do. <sighs> Happy birthday, sissy. That's so cool. Should we say a prayer together? Yeah. Totally. All right, praying here is a pretty big deal. So friends, I would like to invite you to stand up, and we're going to stretch it out. So reach up nice and high. Nice and high. Get those praying hands ready. Nice and wide. Touch your toes. Reach them out wide, wide once again and wrap Jesus into a hug and everyone is invited to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God. Thank you for knock knock jokes. Thank you for knock -knock jokes. And the surprise behind each door. Thank you for Jesus. Who teaches us, who teaches us to love in surprising ways. In surprising ways. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, friends, so much. You can head back to your seats. Thank you for all the fun jokes. Yes, there sure is. All right, thank you all so much. morning, I'm going to make another sort of surprising appeal. I'm going to make an appeal for the simple dandelion. Now I know that to many of you, these are just weeds that interfere with creating that lush green carpet of Kentucky bluegrass we all know and love. 
I know that some folks, maybe even especially some dads on Father's Day that are out there, wonder why I would be bringing up enemy number one to summer lawn maintenance. But here's my appeal. I think we need to reframe the dandelion. About a month ago, I was driving out to Chenier's to get some plants for our new garden in our yard, which by the way is filled with dandelions. I drove by fields of long, lush, green grass dotted with hundreds of yellow dandelions. Seas of green and yellow decorating the earth with vibrant colors. In my own neighborhood, dandelions are some of those first flowers that pop up. And on walks, we would see bees buzzing from dandelion to dandelion, collecting nectar and pollen to make food for the hive. Dandelions, fun fact, are even great for soil health. They have really deep roots that do an excellent job of bringing nitrogen and other minerals up to the surface of the soil. It makes them a great companion plant for your gardens, where those vegetables have more shallow roots. Growing up, my dad would often send my sisters and I out to the grass to help tackle the dandelion problem in our yard. There were these special tools specifically marketed to target the dandelion's deep roots. You would stick it into the ground and the dandelion would just pop up. I went about this work with vigor. I felt industrious and useful. These dandelions were in the way of achieving the perfect manicured lawn. They get in the way of our manicured landscapes the goals we set for our yards and our parks. Their seeds scatter in such a way that foil all plans we have for control of our outdoor spaces. They are chaos in the order of the straight and perfectly manicured world of the lawn. In our gospel for today, Jesus has a lot to say about seeds. And all of it plays into some sort of absurdist humor and confusing outcomes. The Gospel of Mark features a Jesus who amazes and confuses people in equal measure. Here stands a teacher, someone well-versed in Jewish scripture and tradition, with a group of loyal followers and friends to boot. Yet, Jesus offers confusing and even funny stories that seem to clarify nothing and confuse everything. The kingdom of God is as if someone scatters seed on the ground and then does nothing. With what can we compare the kingdom of God but to a mustard seed? We know how this story goes. From something little grows something large and magnificent. You might recall the imagery of the mighty cedars of Lebanon we heard in our psalm and in our first reading. Or here, in the UP, you might think of the largest, oldest pine tree in the forest. But Mark claims that the reign of God is like the smallest of mustard seeds that grows into the mightiest, the strongest, the most impressive of shrubs. Shrubbery is the point of comparison Mark draws to the reign of God. And fun fact, the original word for shrubbery that we have is also used to define a vegetable plant. So you wouldn't be too far off from the original manuscript to say that the reign of God is like the tiniest of mustard seeds that grows into the mightiest of zucchinis. It's absurd. And the crowds listening to Jesus would think so too. They might think it's a comedy club. These Parables, they clarify nothing and muddy our understanding of everything. And perhaps for our gospel author, Mark, that's the point. Mark tells us about a Jesus who doesn't explain the details or the reasoning or some step-by-step -step guide to following him. Mark tells us about a Jesus who usurps expectation, amazes and confounds, speaks about God's reign using parables about seeds and plants, and ultimately doesn't come as a strong and heroic Messiah, but ultimately goes to the cross to die. 
The story of Jesus in the book of Mark does not go as one expects. Even for us hearers today who may have grown up with these stories, Mark as an author humbles us and begs us to take a closer look to these absurd parables and these silly little comparisons. The reign of God will be nothing like we expect. Do we even have enough humility to be okay sitting with the mystery and confusion of this? Shouldn't I today be standing up here preaching and teaching to help clarify and explain exactly what Jesus is trying to say here? Shouldn't we go into Bible studies to learn and to know more about the way God works in the world? Shouldn't we, able, shouldn't we be able to define it, to tell people what it will look like? Shouldn't we be able to answer all of our children's questions about God and faith? Shouldn't we hide away our own questions and confusion, lest someone thinks we don't have enough faith or we haven't been paying enough attention? Thomas Edison, yeah, the light bulb dude, was not someone keen on religions or the way the world religions talked about a god. Some would deem him to be an atheist, someone who believed in no god, to be sure. But I think Thomas Edison perhaps said it best, and I think the gospel author Mark might agree with him, when Mr. Edison said, we don't know a millionth of one percent about anything. What if that was Jesus' point with these silly little parables? What if this is why Mark wrote these stories in this way, to remind us that we are not the growers, we are not the knowers, and heck, we are not even very good sowers. But we do, but we do, but what do we need to do besides scatter these seeds? But sleep and rise night and day, and point to where the gospel bears fruit. Wait for the, where the reign of God breaks into our world. Celebrate where God cultivates hope and love. Embody the shelter and abundance the reign of God promises for this world. This is who Jesus is. The incarnation of the God of all creation. The living promise of reconciliation and shelter and abundance for all of us. Jesus never promised that this growth, this cultivation of those seeds, would go unhindered. That the progress of these seeds would be some linear path. Perhaps ten years from now, not as many seeds will have burst forth. Or perhaps ten years from now, these seeds will be exploding growth before our eyes. Who knows? Jesus promises nothing about that. Jesus does not promise that the growth of these seeds will look like anything we expect. Actually, he promises the exact opposite, that we will be confused and maybe even a little flabbergasted by the way the reign of God looks in our world. Yes, the reign of God breaks into our world, but we cannot imagine when or where or how. But like the seeds scattered around, it will not be confined to one space. It will not be confined to church buildings or church walls. It will be not confined for one group or another, but it will scatter the earth. The reign of God will break in throughout all of God's creation into the fullness of all of our human experiences. There is no good news to proclaim, no gospel proclamation that will not proclaim the good news and reconciliation and hope in our political systems. There's no such gospel that can be proclaimed that is not also for our economic realities. There is no gospel that can be proclaimed that does not speak to the embodied experience of being human in all types of bodies and in all types of experiences in this world. The gospel news, the good news, is revealed in a God who became human, who embodied the human experience lived among unjust systems and brutal occupation, knew the tyranny of poverty and the corruption of power, knew hunger and grief and pain, knew medical diagnoses that tore families apart, 
but also new friendship and family and the love we find in relationship with one another. The gospel is the good news that the might and authority of God became human, only to be killed by the hands of those oppressive systems. It's unexpected and absurd, but that's how God breaks in. The gospel provides sanctuary and hospitality, sustenance and hope. It offers shelter like for birds amid the mightiest zucchini. It's not at all as we would expect, but it's the only gospel we have to proclaim. It is mysterious and absurd. It makes no sense, yet in its confusion, it offers us a hope to cling to, like a dandelion, littering our manicured lawns with chaos and beauty. How it spreads doesn't always make sense. Maybe sometimes we prefer it not be there, but it's an important part of the ecosystem. God's reign is breaking into our world. The good news of Jesus makes all things new, and we have no idea how those seeds will bloom. So we scatter, and we watch, and we embody the good news of God's reign, pointing to the growth we offer, the hope and rejuvenation for the weary and the cynical. Offering the fruits of God's labor, we welcome and we shelter. As the church, there is no gospel we can claim where Jesus remains a dormant seed forgotten and buried in the ground. As the church, there is no gospel we can proclaim where Jesus stays dead. Amen. The hymn of the day can be found in your cranberry colored hymnals. Hymn number 690. in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish your faithful people through the gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God, Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation, days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon and tides of the sea. Let these patterns assure us of your consistency. Merciful God, you raise the lowly and humble those in high regard. Raise up all who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. As we anticipate Juneteenth, banish white supremacy and bigotry from the hearts of your people and remove the inclination toward anger and violence. Merciful God, tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises, especially Pastor Dean Peterson, Roy Hevola, Lynn Liebel, Bert Zenker, Jim Lancor, Bob Pulowski, Lloyd Jensen, Kristen Farrell, Chris Lund, Dennis Severinsen, Rosemary Hendrickson, Eileen Servant, Kent Anderson, and those who we name before you now, either aloud or in this moment of silence. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people facing chronic pain. Merciful God, as you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, Bring your comfort and peace, merciful God. With gratitude, remember the Emmanuel Nine Martyrs and all the saints who are now at home with you. Be with the family of Caleb Meyer and the entire Escanaba Student Success Center as they mourn. Remain steadfast by the families of two summer staff members of ELCA camps in North Dakota who lost their lives in an automobile accident this, week, this past week. Offer us peace in our hearts that we grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God, receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share signs of that peace with one another.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to be called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, my God. given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Here at Bethany Lutheran, we believe that Jesus has prepared a place especially for you at this, the Lord's table. Wherever you may be on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome to receive communion here. Our ushers will guide you forward down the center aisle where you may choose to stand or kneel at our communion rail. If this is not accessible to you, just let us know and we will bring communion out to you. In the center of these trays, you will find a lighter liquid, and that is a non-alcoholic apple juice. We have gluten-free wafers available. If you would like that option, please just let me know. Christ has set this table with more than enough for all. Come.
Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask, as you have nourished us in this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. As we go out from this place today, I just have a few announcements. The first being at 104 years old, Betty Goulet died this last week. This coming Friday, her funeral services will be held at Anderson Funeral Home. Stay tuned for a more specific time on that, but we will gather to comfort and to console one another, to celebrate a long life well lived, and to proclaim the hope that we have as the body of Christ in eternal life. If you look at your inserts, your goldenrod colored inserts, you will find that we have a lot going on here at Bethany Lutheran. It is time to sign up to volunteer to help with our Vacation Bible School program. This is a shared ministry with Emmanuel Lutheran Church. We offer a Vacation Bible School in the evening for the community of Escanaba. For busy parents who are working the day to have a place to drop their kids off to learn a little bit more about God and to have fun with their peers. But it means we need a lot of help. We need help in the classroom. We need help with meals. We need a lot of help the last day we're having a community meal in Emanuel's parking lot. So it is something you won't want to miss out on. So please remember to sign up to help out with that and to tell the kids you know in your life to sign up for a week of fun. Our summer book study is meeting on Thursday night this week, and you can still sign up to help with worship. There is a physical sign-up sheet in the back of the church there, and this QR code will take you to our online sign-up sheet, so you get to pick whatever speed you want to go at. And I know today is Father's Day, and with that can come celebrations, it can come painful memories, um, it can come with reminders of relationships that maybe aren't quite what we wish they could be. And so I have a prayer for us this day. So I invite you to take whatever prayerful position is most comfortable for you. Gracious God, on this Father's Day, we're especially thankful for the fathers and the father figures in our lives. Hold them in your good care. Give them patience and wisdom and strength that through them their families may experience your unconditional love. Grant peace and give comfort to those from whom this day is a day of grief or a day of painful memory. Bless those who long to be fathers and those for whom this day is difficult. Amen. There is grace abundant in this world. You have eaten it in the bread and wine at the table. You have heard it proclaimed through scripture. And now it is time to go out to scatter the seed with abundance, not caring where it falls, but trusting that God's good growth will come. I invite you to rise and to receive this blessing. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. You can find your sending song in your cranberry colored hymnals, hymn number 824.
body of Christ. 